very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here with us. It's lovely to see this hall full. And uh, I know you all are here to share in the excitement of discovering what are the top 50 brands in terms of the most valuable Indian brands. Brand value is something which is often spoken about, and I think during the sessions in the day today as well, there was a conversation about brands. What is brand value? What is brand valuation? Uh, a simple uh, insight that uh, I came across with the fact of saying, so many times you hear about Starbucks, and you hear about how it defined itself as a brand as the third place. And perhaps the way the brand has emotively connected with consumers, with people all across, makes you drive past a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts to get to a Starbucks to buy perhaps the same coffee that costs six times more than the other two locations. Now that's brand value. That is what a brand creates in consumers' minds. Uh, if you look at the dollar bill, it's a piece of paper. But on it are inscribed all those elements of a brand. There is a promise that we will, play, that we will pay. Uh, there is a message from George Washington, the first president, that it's also on the dollar bill. There is, of course, a physical value that is given to the dollar in terms of what is its value by itself. And then they've also added an emotive message at the end, in God we trust. So you do realize that everywhere, even this piece of paper has then taken on a far bigger value and has a unified value across the world as a currency that people trust in. What is happening with brands here in India? Well, we're going to find all that out and you will understand what the entire survey unveils, but also it's just mind boggling to see the amount of data points that have been collected to come up with this Brand Z survey. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Brand Z. Thank you, thank you so much. And honestly, look at that, uh, 3.1 million consumers, 
those data points, 4.6 billion data points. It's absolutely incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, I have some important data to share with you as well. Uh, there is no GST on applause. So can you please put your hands together warmly once, all of you who are there. Yes, come on, it's your evening. We're going to be celebrating each and every one of you. Uh, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and you know, I was trying to give her a little bit of a lesson from school. They had to do a chapter on birds. So I turned to her and I said, you know, uh, birds that go to sleep really late at night, they are called, you know, uh, they go to sleep late, they're called owls. And she nodded. And I said, and birds that wake up really early in the morning, they're called larks. And then I said, those who go to sleep late and wake up early, and Pat came the reply, they're called angry birds. <laughs> you know, it's like that. For, for children today, even things like this associate various values with even the games that they end up playing. And I think that's the question that people have been talking about, saying there are two parts of business strategy the need to ensure the short-term objectives on one side and the long-term goals on the other side as well. But doing all of this, I think, is part of the methodology which is applied at Brand Z. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be calling on our first speaker for the evening, David Roth, who is the CEO for the store WPP, Europe, Middle East, and Asia, Africa, and Asia. And, and there's something really interesting that I found about David. He's the only non-sportsman slash woman ever to have been awarded the UK prestigious Sports Sponsorship Personality of the Year. Now, now that's, you know, value in a different way. Please put your hands together for David Roth. Hello, uh, good evening, and uh, a very, very warm welcome. Uh, my name is David Roth. Uh, from WPP. Um, everyone at WPP does lots of different jobs. Um, one of my jobs uh, is to look after the uh, Brandsy worldwide uh, project uh, on behalf of WPP, and it's an absolute honor and a privilege uh, to do that. So on behalf of uh, Sir Martin Sorrell, uh, my boss and the uh, CEO of uh, WPP, a very, very warm welcome and on behalf of all of our 200,000 people plus around the world who do only one thing, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, on your behalf and on our clients' behalf, which is to build, maintain, nurture, grow and develop strong, valuable brands. And Brand Z is a tool uh, that we use across the world um, in order to really get to understand how consumers view and see brands. It's something that is only available to WPP companies and it is absolutely big data. We now have 4.6 billion individual data points in the Brandsy database that allows us to do some very interesting analysis, of which some of it we're going to share with you this evening, and the rest of it um, you'll be able to take away with you in the report that looks specifically at the 2017 top 50 most valuable um, Indian brands. But for the very first time, I'm very pleased to announce that not only are we now looking at brands within India, but we are now also able to look at how consumers and very importantly business leaders view countries as brands, not just the brands themselves. And therefore we're able to assess and have a look at the strength of brand India itself. And this we do through a study by one of our um, sister WPP companies, YNR and BAV, in conjunction with US News and uh, Wharton uh, Business School. Now, all of the analysis um, is in the report that you're able to take away with you, but I just want to highlight a couple of things that I hope you'll find interesting, but also I think paints the context uh, for not just Brand India, but how individual brands within India uh, are seen. I think the first thing to say is the perception of brand India very much now reflects the progress and the potential that I think we in this room 
uh, see for India at the moment. It's a very interesting and exciting time for India as a nation, for brands in India, and most importantly, for brand India. And in that context, it's really interesting to see that the business decision makers who we um, spoke to and interviewed, it's a quantitative study, we looked at 80 different countries around the world, and therefore we're able to look at how India business leaders and consumers see India, and also how those other uh, 79 countries view uh, India, outside India looking in, inside India looking out. And the business decisions rank India as number two in the what we call the movers dimension. These are up and coming countries and economies. And it's interesting that they view India now above China and above Japan in that respect. But, and there's always a but in there, but uh, the biggest association that India has for business leaders and consumers outside of India is much more about India's heritage and its culture, and they rank significantly higher than some of the, I suppose, business attributes that we as marketeers and brand builders, I think, would want for Brand India to assume its full uh, potential uh, in the world. So, I don't expect you to read everything on this chart, but just to let you know, out of the 80 countries that we looked at as an amalgamation of the measures that we see here, adventure and citizenship and entrepreneurship and open for business and power and quality of life, India ranks 25 out uh, of 80. And also, just to give you a feel for where India ranks in terms of some of those key dimensions, we see that on the uh, cultural attractions, India is right up there at the top. But as a progressive nation, India has got a long way uh, to go. It's number 30 out of uh, the uh, 80 countries that we looked at. So we can start to see, I suppose, um, how Brand India is going to develop over the years. We'll be doing this study um, each year. And I think it's very interesting for all of us to think about actually how brands can contribute to the development of Brand India. I think in the same way as in the 1960s and early 70s, Americana was very much defined, in a sense, Brand America was very much defined by the big American international brands that started to go global. The imagery that we saw from Coca-Cola, the imagery that we saw from Marlboro, if we're allowed to still talk about cigarette brands, the imagery uh, that we saw, I suppose, slightly later on from McDonald's. And I think it's interesting for all of us who can influence this and who have a view about the role that um, Indian brands and the way in which we talk about India can be used as a vehicle not only for brand development, but also for developing a brand India um, itself. That's just a very small snippet, and I do urge you to take a look at the report and have a look at the brand India uh, concept um, and uh, analysis. And if you want any more information, this is the website and contact details uh, to go to. I want to pick up a couple of other points uh, before I introduce uh, Doreen. I think we're, we're into a very interesting time. We all know Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, but I want to reframe Maslow's hierarchy of needs because I think there are two additional needs that should be on there. And they're right at the bottom now, which is Wi-Fi connection and battery charge. I don't know about you, but I've now redefined what a nanosecond is. A nanosecond is the time that our Wi-Fi network in my home goes down and the children's bedrooms doors open and yell what's going on. And there are a couple of very interesting observations and brands um, that in a sense are using those basic needs to build their businesses and build their brands. When we launched the Brand Z Top 100 Most Valuable Global Brands for 2007, we coined uh, this phrase the fearsome five. In fact, it was a phrase that was picked up by uh, the Financial Times, and they've been using it ever since to describe, I suppose, the consortium of Google, Amazon, 
uh, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, and uh, Apple. And the reason that we called them the Fearsome Five was the extent to which those brands had really grown uh, their brand value over time. And it's interesting looking now at a historic perspective when we started brand valuations for Global some 12 years ago. Apple wasn't even in the top 10. And I think we should think about this in relation to the brands that we see this year in the uh, uh, most valuable Indian brands and how they, that portfolio will develop over time. You can see just the amazing value growth, the amazing shareholder growth that's been created uh, by that fearsome five. And just in terms of percentage change in value, Amazon, which was in a sense a late player into this game, their percentage change is over 2,000%. Uh, and uh, even Microsoft that's had its ups and downs is over 100% uh, uh, over that period. Now, one of the things that really drives brand value is the notion of meaningfully different. If your brand is seen as meaningfully different, it is a turbocharge to increasing your brand value. And again, you can just see how the fearsome five over that time period from 2007 have increased that key uh, metric. And even Facebook, which uh, we only started to value when it became uh, uh, public um, in uh, 2011, uh, uh, has increased their meaningful difference over that period of time at an, an amazing rate. But probably one of the most interesting and illuminating and profound things that we now can do with all that data, with all those data points, is to analyze the relationship between valuable brands and shareholder value. After all, what is it that we do and we ask for in the uh, budget rounds that all of us have to go through in our organizations to um, ensure that we have uh, a sufficient marketing budget to to invest in the brands. And what we can now prove beyond doubt is that those brands that are strong, that are valuable, actually deliver superior shareholders' returns. And that's got to be something that um, is not only good for companies, but also very good for shareholders as well. We've run that analysis on the top 100 most valuable global brands. We run that analysis on the top 100 most valuable Chinese brands. And Doreen's going to uh, explain a little bit more about uh, the numbers on this as well. And we've run this on the 2016, and in a minute you'll be seeing the 2017 data for uh, um, India, and that's in the report. All of this conclusively proves that investing in becoming a strong brand in the brand Z top rankings also means that you will deliver superior shareholder value as well. And I suppose at this point, I'm legally obliged to say that share prices go up as well as go down. And please don't use this as an investment advice, but I've got to say it's a pretty good investment. Um, one last thought to leave you with, because we've been looking at those fearsome five and other brands as well to understand an additional component that we are now beginning to see, and that is about innovation. And innovation also is now a real driver of brand value. So those brands that are seen as strong, valuable brands outperform the stock market. Those brands that are seen as strong and valuable in the brand Z uh, top rankings and also are seen as innovative outperform the stock market index even higher. So not only should you start to create and develop strong, valuable brands, but also it's important to overlay the element of innovation. So I urge you to pick up the report um, as you leave. It is absolutely cram-packed full of insight um, that you can use, actionable insight that you can use from across the WPP companies. It's a great tool, I think, to understand the dynamics of what's going on in the Indian market. And uh, 
It is the combination of, I suppose, what we in WPP like to, talk, like to call horizontality. It's the combination of the skills, the learning, the resource, the intellect, and the vision of all of our colleagues across all of India, across all of our operating companies. I'd like to say to all of the brands that will be revealed in the top 50, absolute congratulations. It's an extraordinary achievement. India is primed, as you'll see when you look at the country um, data in the report, I think for some great times ahead. And from everybody at WPP, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us and congratulations to every single brand who's made the list this year. Thank you very much indeed. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm sure you all want to know the other insights. Well, uh, I'm going to be calling Doreen Wang to come and join us here. Head Brand Z, Kantra Milward Brown, she's here with us. Uh, there are one or two interesting things that I know about her. She's got a house in New York, which she rarely spends time in because she is globetrotting all the time. Two to three countries every month. Uh, when I first said every year, she was like, no, every month. So you can well understand uh, what she's up to. She says she lives on an airplane. Uh, but there's something more. Tell us something we, we don't know, Doreen. All right. This is about my, uh, when I speak English, I have a very unique Chinese, British, American accent, and now I'm adding in the Indian element. So it's a very unique accent, and it's very hard for you to catch up. Well, uh, we, you know, here we call it exotic. That's what there it we is. Go. So, so it's, it's, it's over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> so today we are here to celebrate brand building for Indian brands. And actually, I did some calculation. Winning any award out of this 120,000 brands we have researched and valued is statistically more difficult than winning the Academy Award. So congratulations for winning the Oscar of Marketing. It is your dedication, your ambition, and your hard work and to build those very, very strong brands. And every year, we publish the global top 100, the India, China, and the other 11 country rankings at NASDAQ, Financial Times, Bloomberg, London Stock Market. And the investors pay close attention to the result because that is the, the result they, they will know how to update their portfolio. What are the brands have better potential for them to increase their investment? And the 2017 global top 100 brands the total value has reached to 3.6 trillion US dollars. That number looks big. Actually, that number is very big. It's bigger than the country GDP of Germany. 100 brands value is larger than the country GDP of, of Germany. No wonder Coca-Cola said, you can burn all my factory and even my product. I still have $78 billion as my brand value. So when we look at, as David mentioned, when we look at strong brands generated superior shareholder return over the past 12 years, those global top 100 most valuable brands actually outperform S&P 500 by 50%. And we are four times better than MSCI, Morgan Stanley Capital International. It actually is a very, very good, strong performing fund. And when I talked to the UBS chief investment officer and she told me that less than 1% of the fund in the past 10 years can achieve our brand Z result. That's why many investment banks are, are coming to us and want to build the, 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 the portfolio based on the result. What is more interesting to me is, let's look at this. The challenging year, 08, 09, both strong brands and average brands lost their, their share price. However, it only took strong brands, the blue line, half a year, versus the average brands, the yellow line, four and a half year to recover. So strong brands can save you nine times of precious investment time. 
So as marketers, as brand builders, let's keep this in mind. Brand building is not cost. It is the most important investment any company should make to ensure long-term and sustainable financial growth. Please bring this chart to your CEO if he's not here. And the, what is the secret of brand building? How can we drive brand value? How can we grow like that in the future? I, I want to share with you five secrets, but before I do that, let me ask you a question. Can you make a guess? How many of the top 100 10 years ago have been replaced over the past 10 years by the new and the faster growing brands? Any guesses? Any guess? 40%? 50%? Okay, 30%, okay, any other guesses? 60%, 20%, okay, any 100% guess? No, we are, we, are, we, are, we are optimistic. You are the winner, 48 brands, so close to 50% of the brands have been replaced. And they are not weak brands, they are actually still quite strong, but they are not growing as fast as, as David mentioned, some fearsome five and brands like Huawei from emerging market. And we are seeing those brands are putting a lot of threat, especially in the digital era. So what are the lessons as brand builders we should keep in mind to continue to win in the digital and AI era? Five lessons. Lesson number one, all the strong brands need to have a strong purpose. You need to understand what you stand for and how you can make the world a better place, how you can improve people's life. Starbucks is certainly not the best coffee, but Starbucks is the place to connect to human beings. Airbnb is not just a hospitality online service brand. It is a place you find you belong and you will find your temporary home. So the, the brands with strong brand purpose have achieved a value growth that is double the average brands. And you know what? Strong brand purpose is not just inspiring your consumers. More important, it is motivating your own employees and create that real social value. With a strong purpose at the heart of the organization, and you still need to be innovative. And those brands being perceived high on innovative and have achieved a value growth that is seven times faster. And, uh, but, but innovation is not for the sake of innovation. Innovation is nothing if it is not recognized by the consumers, right? So brand like Adidas, the perceived innovation has declined for quite a few years, and then the brand is back to its original, back to the core DNA, and it increases investment and uh, being very appealing to the teenagers and the back up and grow the value again and become this year's the fastest grower, 58% increase. So innovation actually has a low correlation with your R&D investment. And uh, innovation is a holistic communication of your breakthrough point. So let's look at this. Those perceived high on innovation have achieved a value growth seven times faster than the average and the low. And however, the average and low, no difference. So you really need to have some breakthrough innovation, which is being endorsed by the consumers. And in the meantime, those brands perceived high on innovation, they also invest on advertising 35% more than the other brand. Why? Because no matter it's product or packaging or any innovation, your window is only one to two years, and the other brands will catch up. And during this one to two years, you really need to own consumers' mind, and you need this investment. So innovation and advertising are closely integrated. And then, yes, we, are, we needed to announce it, to communicate it, to make it salient, and communication definitely puts the brand at the advantage. If you are only meaningfully different, have a strong proposition without great advertising support, your brand value growth over the past 10 years was only 82%. However, if you have both, meaningfully different proposition plus 
great advertising, you really enter the sweet spot. You can double the growth rate. But in the digital and AI era, we all know that we all know that no matter how many great things you, you talk about your brand, the consumers won't believe you until they try it. And the experience gives them the opportunity, actually also give you the challenge whether you are going to make it or you are going to break it. And many brands we are seeing globally, they take advantage of their strength from one category and expand it. And now they are trying to deliver this ecosystem experience. Like Amazon, it's not just an e-commerce brand now. Amazon moved beyond to Amazon Go Music, uh, uh, video, and also uh, um, Amazon Alexa. So the brand is delivering this ecosystem experience across all the products. And in India, we have so many conglomerate great brands. How can we deliver this ecosystem experience? And then, after your great experience is delivered again and again, love is being generated. Love in the digital era is not just warm or nice. Love follows great experience. And if there is a pathway, if there is a pathway to brand success in the next decade, how's the pathway going to look like? It starts from the brand purpose motivating your consumers as well as your employees and being perceived innovative and keep delivering great brand experience and love follows experience. And also keep this in mind. No matter how innovative you are, you all have slow down time. And the love is that cushion which gives you time until your next big innovation wave starts. And therefore, you will be able to build not just differentiating, but meaningfully differentiating brand. Communication help you amplify it. And the foundation. The foundation is consumer insight. India, such dynamic, fast-moving market. Are you sure you really understand the change of your consumer attitude and behavior? And you need future-ready consumer insight. WPP and Kantar are here to help you. We believe that together with our local colleagues and the, and the global experts, and together we are going to build meaningfully different and extremely successful Indian brands. And more important that, than that, we will together build Brand India. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to you know, remind you of the GST rule on applause. I think a big round of applause for Doreen. That was really, really wonderful. Um, here at WPP, there are lots and lots of innovations that keep taking place. One such opportunity is an unconference. It's something that uh, many of you may have attended. If you haven't, uh, I'm going to give you a sneak preview of something that happens. It's called Stream, and it's right up your alley. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, a very short video to show you on another WPP effort, which is called Stream. Welcome, first of all, uh, to the fourth WPP Stream India.
And the amazing thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that this year, Stream Asia is coming to India. It's going to be happening in Jaipur. And I'm going to call two streamers to join me on stage here to tell us very quickly about their experiences. May I request Siddharth Banerjee to join me over here? Sid, uh, if he can have you here. Uh, you all know Siddharth from Vodafone. And we've also got Karthi here. Karthi is right there uh, from Kotak. Check. You can choose your weapon. So a very quick question that I wanted to ask you all is saying, you are invited every year to hundreds of conferences. Why do you make room for stream? So uh, it's on. I am uh, three streams old. Uh, but before I answer that question, Roshan, there was a book that Roshan had recommended to me, which is called Tools of Titans by a guy called Tim Ferriss. And it's essentially a book where he pulls together secrets uh, and tips from high achievers from all different varieties of life and across various disciplines. And one of the things that I was reading about just yesterday was about the fact that there are some of these high performers, type A types. Uh, what they do is they, on an Excel sheet, calculate what their age is, what, what life expectancy is, and then, then they translate it back to the number of days that they have to live on planet Earth, yeah, on an optimistic basis. And I do think that that two and a half days at stream, which if people have missed out on, is definitely something which is a miss. Because now I've been at stream for um, three occasions now. My first stream, I was absolute newbie, as they call it, a streamer who was a newbie. I sat quietly. I just listened into all the conversations. I still remember one of the sessions that uh, Ranjan and Yossi Vardi had taken explaining the concept of unconference. Uh, and that at least gave me an idea into what makes a stream magical. The second stream, I went a little overboard. So I did everything possible, including hosting uh, this particular uh, conference uh, or mini conference within stream, um, which uh, went on to be a, a success. And the, the third hunt. one, and the third one oh, was okay. the one uh, which we hosted, uh, which was last year, where we road tested the concept of a book that Roshan and I are trying to put together and got direct real-time feedback from Piyush uh, and a whole lot of diverse people. So the reason why I keep going back to stream is because a fabulous unconference environment where we can discuss anything and everything under the sun. Second, great diversity of people. Where will you find such diversity of people uh, across two and a half days? And I think the third thing, and that's where honesty of effort shows in uh, with Apurva and team, where there is so much of work, so much of passion, sh so much of energy that's put together that it's really a pleasure being there. You know, next time we don't need an, a video, we'll just put you up on the screen. Because you summed the entire thing up for us. That's, that's what it was. Karthi, tell me, why do you make time for it? What he said. <laughs> ditto. <laughs> I knew it was going to become a ditto on this. Eye candy. Uh, I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? No. What I meant is candy store. Uh, you saw that board once in a while they showed in the film. That board has about six slots, a day, uh, six slots vertically for hours of the day, and I think about eight or 10 venues. So that's like 30 different conversations you have to choose from to either join, drive, or attend. And it's and two days of that, so that's double, 160 conversations roughly, if my math is right. And it's a nightmare just to choose. It's so frustrating saying that, shit, I'm missing. there's lots of FOMO. And I think one of the key reasons I go to stream is to minimize FOMO as best as I can, because the conversations are really stimulating. I remember the stream that I went to last. I missed this one, the one that you guys did this fabulous gig at. I heard about it. I went from a conversation on dating apps where I found out that girls in small town India are using the dating app to literally date, that they will talk to people on apps, uh, from boys from big, bigger cities because they are aspirational. They probably will never meet that guy, but the, just the conversation on the app is good enough. To a conversation on how uh, we are at an age where each of us is going to probably have four long-term stable relationships in our lives, four different relationships, to a conversation where uh, a CEO who I will not name, with his wife in the room, discussed at length the merits of infidelity, to a conversation, one which I drove briefly, on the subject of how we can fix rape in this country. This can happen at stream, and I think the great positive is that you can go from one end of the spectrum to the other, and... Uh, Big plus for all the brands in the room. 
you won't get sold to at stream, which I think is really valuable, and that's what I cherish most. I think that's a wonderful insight because you know many times people attend these conferences thinking that this is going to be one of those card exchange places or whatever, etc. You know, roller doc, roller roller des uh, moments. But really, there there is nobody pushing anything down, and you know we all get together. If you had to write a Twitter bio for Stream, what would it be? Go for it. I have to do check my notes <laughs> <laughs> and my glasses. So I would say it's uh, PPT karaoke. I would start with that. There is a gig there, which is the most entertaining thing. It turns uh, on its head the idea of PowerPoint presentations really powerfully and entertainingly. So I'd start with PPT karaoke. That's two words. And I am, I don't know, about 100 characters short. So that's going to be a bit of a struggle. Uh, the fact that it's uh, free. Yeah, brands get to go for free. That's <laughs> useful and important. The fact that uh, Ranjan Kapoor and uh, one year, if I remember right, Piyush Pandey will be cooking for you. Yeah, at midnight, roughly around midnight, uh, many of these people will be cooking for you. There'll be lots of alcohol in the food, and uh, that may be upside, downside, depending on what you like. I'm out of characters. Well, that's fabulous. I think, I think uh, that's a very character-filled, colorful bio for stream. Anything you'd add to that, Sid? So, uh, as as Karti was... Uh, thinking his tweet through. Uh, knowledge and friendship accelerator, definitely for me. Um, live indie music, Marty Bani on ramparts of ancient fort. Too many characters, but yeah, uh, stays, uh, stays for me. Um, the stream band, magical experience uh, and stimulating conversations. I think, I think you know, uh, it's, it's stream is a, is a place where when you, when you actually come, I think there's so much thesis, antithesis, there's some synthesis you leave with every time. There are arguments, there are fights, there are discussions, there are debates, and then you're cooking together and drinking in the evening. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think you've just given us the best real trailer. I think we'll convert this into a video and, and put it out there because there could be nothing better. But brands, if you haven't been to stream, you're missing out. Please make time, and this time it's Stream Asia. Uh, one conversation that you, you gave us four conversations that you took away. One conversation that you took away from stream. Sid, is there any one conversation that you remember or one person you met who you think you've really connected with? So I, I don't think there is one person because I just think that over three streams there have been this fantastic multiplicity of conversations. So I think I, I can quite relate when Karthi says that uh, there was this dating conversation that happened that was Siddharth Mangaram of Flow. Uh, where he was actually giving us insights into how small town India is interacting with uh, the larger towns. Um, I remember a conversation that the TVF guys came and talked about why the resurgence of beards is coming back for the Indian male. Yeah, that had not, it was category agnostic. Yeah, but just the sheer understanding of that and, and the, just the breadth of experiences. I remember Kunal Jaiswani playing with his AR and VR toys on a stage in the tech symposium at Stream. And that was, and when he was talking passionately about it. So I think a couple of these conversations have stayed on. And of course, the one, the gig that uh, you and I did. No, no, but it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I, I, I think you all have really given a fabulous uh, summary. Will you be making time again and again? And who would you take with you? Who's one person you really feel you could add to that mix? Just one person. Well, could be a creative, because there are creators, there are technologists, there are brand managers. You know, if you got an invite, who would you pass it on to? Who would you give it to? Ah, okay. So certainly uh, the head of my, uh, one of my creative agencies, who unfortunately is not a WPP member, so won't get invited on his <laughs> own team. <laughs> so that's who I would actually give my pass to as well. Okay. Sid, anybody you'd want to pass, give the pass to? So I think I had extended the invite to two members of my team who deal specifically with youth and media. Uh, but I'm also interested in seeing if uh, more and more people from my agency partnerships also come for it so that we can come together as an intact team, take some of the learnings and absorb it back into the workplace. Fantastic. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for telling us about Stream. Thank you. Uh, just another lovely effort that uh, WPP does. You know, I was... Thank you. Thank you. I was looking at what Doreen had just shared with us, and when Doreen was sharing all those charts, and I saw the 2008-2009 slump, uh, I, I remembered something. So there was a, an interview which somebody was taking with the head of a growing company. So the journalist turned and said, so how many employees are working in your company? And the guy turned pat and said, about half of them. Because sometimes it's not the number, but the effort that actually uh, counts. 
Um, another, another incident from that same time was uh, a check that bounced, and a man went to the bank and said, you know, the check says insufficient funds. I don't know whether you're talking about mine or yours, because that was the kind of environment. But look at how the brands bounced back, absolutely scintillating uh, to know. Ladies and gentlemen, we have someone very special here with us, and when I tried to go online and find some amazing facts, I, I, I discovered a few things. I'm sure he can tell you a lot more amazing things because uh, I was just talking to him outside and said, you attended a conference where you told almost everybody attending that their future uh, was, you know, the, the death knell was ringing and everybody turned and woke up to the realities of the things they need to face. But uh, this man is amazing. He, he says you can overcome everything with passion, any barriers with passion. He talks of a 10,000 hour rule that I, I'm dying to know what is that 10,000 hour rule, uh, but also believes that consistency and working hard over a long period of time is very, very important. Delivering a keynote here, we have Vice President for Google India and Southeast Asia, Rajan Anandan. Please put your hands together for Rajan. <laughs> everyone. Um, first and foremost, David, you know, we are the friendly five. <laughs> you know, I don't know where this thing called the fearsome five came from. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look at us. We are so friendly. Just because you generate a lot of cash doesn't mean you have to be fearful. Um, I'd like to start by thanking uh, the WPP team for uh, inviting me. It's uh, truly a pleasure to be here. You know, the theme that uh, uh, there was a, a panel that uh, we had panel discussion earlier today, um, and the topic of the panel was valuation or value creation, near term or long term. And I thought I would spend 10 or 15 minutes focusing on this topic, uh, because it's actually a theme that's near and dear to me. Over the last uh, 20 plus years, I've been a very active angel investor in my personal capacity. Uh, investing in early stage technology companies. And as an angel investor, what you're really trying to do is find the next big breakthrough idea or company, and one that will hopefully become a very large business over a period of time. So I'd like to start by taking you back to October of 2010. 25 year old, he had spent a couple of years at Microsoft in India, uh, came to me with an idea, and the idea was a cab aggregation business to aggregate taxis and sort of do marketplace type business with taxis. He was going to start in Bombay and then over a period of time scale, you know, all across, all across India. Very passionate entrepreneur, very driven, great references from Microsoft, but quite frankly, you know, pretty obscure idea, right? abrogating taxis, and I wanted you to go back seven years. It was October of 2010. Uber had been launched about 15 months before that in, in the US, but you know, I was actually at the point not really, I was going back and forth to Seattle. I was with Microsoft, so uh, another friendly five, David, you know, Microsoft. Um, it's, go it's good that I left because their valuation seems to have not gone up as much as you know, Google's brand value. Uh, but my circuit was really Seattle, so I missed out on the Silicon Valley circuit. By the way, uh, I love Microsoft too. I, I'm sure they're all here. Um, but my circuit was actually Seattle, so I hadn't quite heard of, of Uber. So I passed on investing. And my co-investors who invested in Ola, and by the way, the founder was Bhavesh Agrawal and the company was Ola. And my co-investors who invested in Ola have made 500x, and that single investment was the most successful angel investment in the history of the Indian internet, right? So valuation versus value creation. And after, at that point, I'd been angel investing for about 17 years, and I actually thought I was pretty damn good at it. Completely missed the most exciting, the best returns that we've seen, at least in the Indian internet. And even today, as I'm sure all of you would agree, the on-demand transport space, now you know it's much more established, uh, several million rides a day between Ola and Uber in India, there's still constant debates about, is this for real? 
Are these companies going to become real? Are these companies overvalued? And whether it's Ola or Uber, I'm sure you've read that the constant debates that uh, investors, the media, speculators have about is Uber really worth 60 or 70 billion dollars? And the debate goes on. And I think this one, this particular story of on-demand transport or on-demand taxis is a very interesting one to take the lens, to apply this lens of valuation or value creation. Standing here today, what I can tell you very confidently is that the winner in the Indian on-demand transport space, because it's not about taxis or bikes or buses, it's really about on-demand transport, will be a very large, very valuable company that will generate enormous amounts of profits over the next 10 to 15 years. And the reason it's going to happen is very simple. They meet a huge unmet need. The reality is most of India will never own a car. India will move from a handful of Indians, a few million Indians owning cars, 50, 100 million Indians owning two-wheelers, to a nation of shared transport, right? And that's abundantly clear today. Partly driven by disposable income, actually much more so driven by the infrastructure or the lack of infrastructure in the country. So clearly a decade from now, this is going to be a very large space, and the company that wins this space will be very large and will actually generate a large amount of profit. However, the way these companies, Ola and Uber being two, and I'll talk about a few others, are being built is very, very different from maybe many of you, how many of you have grown up building your brands, building your products, right? The traditional way in which products get launched, companies get launched, brands get launched, is you want to be profitable from day one. In our industry, in the technology industry at large, and I'm now generalizing a little bit, that is actually not how we've done it over the last 10 or 15 years. In our industry, what we kind of look at is find very big problems, build amazing solutions or products, and then aggregate and scale a large number of users, which actually takes quite a long period of time before you start monetizing. And in many ways, what you're seeing in the on-demand taxi space or on the on-demand transport space is exactly that. Once you go from zero to, let's say, two million and three million rides a day, and literally in two or three years, we'll have five million rides every single day, you built consumer habit. You built a large supply base, and what you'll then start seeing is pricing going up, efficiency start kicking in, and all of a sudden you'll start seeing these businesses making a lot of profit. Now, I want to roll back even further and take you to 2005. In the year 2005, if you looked at the 10 most valuable publicly traded companies in the US, only one of them was a technology company. It was Microsoft, and Microsoft had a market cap of $250 billion. Actually, that's probably why I joined them, because I probably saw some brands. Was Brand Z launched by then? Probably not. Actually, I just bought the stock and it's traded on the markets. But actually, if you look at it today, that picture has completely changed. If you look at the top 10 most valuable from a market cap, not brand value, from a market cap standpoint in the US, five of them are technology companies. David, they are what I shall call the friendly five. Apple with over $700 billion of market cap, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, and Facebook. But actually, what's really interesting is not the fact that these five companies combined have a market value of $2.3 trillion. That's actually not what's interesting. By the way, so these five companies combined have a market value that is greater than the gross domestic product of India. But that's actually not what's interesting. What's really interesting is these five companies have an annual profit combined, look at the five companies combined, have an annual profit of $94 billion. And these five companies 
combined have cash of $500 billion, right? So these five companies combined have cash that accounts for more than the gross domestic product of, let's say, a nation like Singapore. But they didn't actually get there from day zero. What's very important to note, especially when you look at the technology sector, is all of these companies, maybe with the exception of Microsoft, because it was created in the 80s, all of these companies, four out of the five, have gone for a very long period of time, first without generating any revenue, and secondly, actually going through a period of investment for a long period of time. And that, we actually don't think is a paradox, it's actually just a different approach to building companies. So in the technology industry, the way we build big brands is really identical to how you build big brands in any other industry. And we heard a lot about that in the two speakers, from the two speakers before me. You know, focus on real consumer pain points, build amazing products and solutions, and then go from there. The only difference that I see between technology industries and maybe more traditional brands is that we in the technology industry don't focus on monetization and generating revenue from day zero. Because the approach that we take is if you actually build amazing products, get hundreds of millions of users, if not billions of users to use them, you will eventually be able to generate significant revenue and significant profits from those products. At Google, we take that approach. Our approach is really very simple. We want to build products that impact billions of lives. As we speak, we have eight products that touch over a billion users. Android, when it was launched, one OEM, one carrier partner, one OEM brand. That was the first Android product. Today, Android operating system runs on thousands of OEM products and is used by two billion users. YouTube wasn't monetized for many, many years. Today, it is the largest online video platform. It is used by 1.5 billion consumers around the world and generates many billions of revenue. If we had taken the approach of building YouTube by saying that we wanted to monetize from day zero, YouTube would not have been what it is today. And that's the approach that we've taken at Google, and I think that's the approach that you're seeing technology companies around the world take, and it does make a lot of people uncomfortable because you're going for a long period of time without making the kind of revenue and the kind of economic returns that you're used to seeing in traditional companies. Now, moving to India, India is at a very, very interesting place. Over 400 million internet users with about 300 million of them accessing the internet on their smartphones. 200 million of them access the internet on their smartphone every single day. And they're spending several hours a day on their smartphones. So we've got a large number of users, and our projection is that by 2020, India will have 650 million internet users, and at least 500 million of them will access the internet on their smartphones. So the exact same dynamic that we've seen around the world, which is being able to go from zero to 50 to 100 to 200 to 300 million consumers using your product, either every day or once a week or a couple of times a week, will become a reality over the next several years. Because when you have 500 million daily active users, and that's only about three or four years away, the ability to build that kind of scale and that kind of consumption and that kind of usage becomes a reality. So we believe that today as we stand, the ability to build large internet-focused brands in India is a reality. And that's why you've seen companies like Flipkart, companies like Ola, companies like Zometo that have done it. But what has lagged so far, and I think the reason we've seen so much media on this topic, is monetization 
and the fact that many of these, all of these companies actually are still very much in investment mode. And tied to the Indian internet, there's a raging debate about the e-commerce sector, and I thought I'd just spend a minute on the e-commerce sector. Valuations have certainly cooled in India over the last 18 months. But still, many would argue, many would debate, that valuations in the e-commerce industry are still way higher than what they should be. So let's take a look at the e-commerce industry in India. Last year, the gross merchandise value of the e-commerce industry was about $16 billion. What's very important to note is that it's still very, very early for e-commerce in India. We're still very much on the first day of the first test match of a five test match series, for those of you that like cricket. It's that early in the Indian e-commerce industry. E-commerce hits a tipping point when GDP per capita gets to about $4,000. And India, as all of you know, we are just about $2,000. We are six to seven years away from hitting that tipping point of $4,000. And once we hit $4,000, what we've seen in country after country after country is that e-commerce not just begins to grow very, very fast, it gets to a point where it doubles every year. So over the next 10 years, in a very conservative estimate, the e-commerce industry, 10 years from now, will be a $200 billion GMV industry. Now stay with me for a minute. The market leader in a space like e-commerce, right? these are generally not winner-take-all industries, but winner takes a large share industry, will have at least 40% market share. So you've got a $200 billion industry, and the number one player will have 40% share. So you've got a company with, let's call it, $80 billion of GMV. The best run, best performing e-commerce companies in the US, China, Brazil, they generate between 1.5 to 2% of net income. So call it billion and a half to $2 billion of net income. These companies are still going to be growing very fast because around 2023, 24 is when we're going to see the inflection point, right? So there's no reason why they won't be growing at 30, 40% even at that point. So a company with $2, $2 billion of net profit, those of you that are, I see, I don't know whether there are any CFOs in the room, will easily trade at 25 multiples. So you're talking about a company that's got a $50 billion cap. Now I want to ask this question, right? If I gave you a company that had a service that was used, in this case e-commerce, by hundreds of millions of Indian consumers that generated $2 billion of net profit, is that a company that creates real value? The answer is absolutely yes. Right? So, so our view is the winner in the e-commerce space, within the next 10 years, the number one company will be worth $50 billion. And I think all of you know that the fifth most valuable publicly traded company in India, and I'm sure we'll see the list in a minute, is actually worth about $45 billion. And this exact same dynamic, i.e. large number of users today, but low levels of monetization, will change dramatically over the next five and 10 years. The exact same dynamic will happen in gaming, in local, in digital advertising, in financial services, uh, digital financial services, and every other segment of the internet space in India. And we are very confident of that simply because you're going to have a large number of users who are spending extraordinary amounts of time. And the only thing, only question that we have at Google at this point is who will win in each of these segments? The fact that each of these segments is going to be very, very large at this point is a foregone conclusion. It's actually mathematics. There's absolutely no way you can now reverse these massive number of consumers spending a huge amount of time. There's no way you can reverse the need of India to have large-scale transport solutions. And the physics of it is that it's only going to happen through models like shared transport. So I'd like to end with this. Brands have always been built for decades, possibly for hundreds of years, 
by really understanding consumer needs and building great solutions to meet those needs. That has not changed, and even in our industry or our space, it is exactly the same thing. It's about understanding needs, and it's about building amazing products. But what has changed in our industry, and you will have to, you'll have a better sense of what will happen in each of your industries, is we first build for scale. We build for scale. And we don't worry and obsess about monetization on day zero. We don't worry about monetization in day 10, in day 365, and for several years. But we do end up with very large companies, as you saw from where I started. The top five technology companies in the world have $500 billion of cash in the bank. And the exact same thing, we believe, will happen in India. Today, I'm very intrigued to see the top 10 brands of India. I'm assuming there's going to be a high correlation to the 10 most valuable publicly traded companies in India, at least the consumer-facing ones. The one thing I can tell you is, given the dynamic nature of what we are seeing with technology, the internet with artificial intelligence, machine learning, and everything else that is likely to come over the next five to 10 years, one thing I would bet my career on and everything I've got is that 10 years from now, when some of you are in this room, at least 50%, if not 80%, of the logos will be different. And I actually believe the logos that will be on this stage, number one, will, be, will have a very significant technology component to them. And in many ways, they will reimagine their industries and reinvent their business models. So in summary, it's still the very same game. Build amazing products, and everything else will come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, some amazing statistics there. And uh, well, if, if there are any tips, I think we can all reach out. Everybody's going to be reaching out to you, I think, at the end of this session to find out, so what to invest in next. Uh, and I don't know whether Rajat's going to share that with everybody, but uh, uh, we'd love to know that portfolio for sure. Um, we were talking about stream just before that. And uh, uh, the one person in this room who comes from a completely different professional career, apart from that, uh, has. I think she's the right person because immense brand value, immense brand value for having been the host of Indian Idol in India for the longest time, immense brand value in terms of her outlook on fashion, which uh, has caught everybody on Instagram, etc. immense brand value in uh, soon to launch, I think, can I, I still can't talk about uh, the fact, but uh, a, a new show because uh, this lady doesn't ever stop. She was at the last stream, which was a very first experience. I'm going to spend just three minutes talking with her very, very quickly about stream. Mini Mathur, please put your hands together for Mini Mathur. Wow, I sound much more important when you're describing me. Um, Ranjan, that was an amazing, amazing talk. Check. That was brilliant. I, I, ah. Okay, my, my first question to you is, is just that. When you... When you first got the invitation to stream, did you just think they were looking for a free host? Uh, it crossed my mind, but then I knew you were around, so the free host thing was taken care of. Um, honestly... <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry, I, 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 am, I, am, the, I am the inside uh, person on, on the job here at WPP. No, very honestly, I first heard, from, uh, you know, first heard of stream from you. You've been telling me for years how much you enjoy the stream experience and how you know, I needed to be part of it. Um, in, you know, I very honestly, I was very skeptical because it's been years since I belonged to this world. I mean, I started my career with J. Walter Thompson, but I haven't yes, been I around. There. Yeah, <laughs> but I hadn't. You know, I'm on the other side. I'm on the content creation side, the media side. So for me, um, I knew no one. Okay, barring you, you were busy hosting, and uh, I didn't have my little, you know, single malt club over there or my golfing buddies. So I was very apprehensive, but I was very excited because. I did not expect, honestly, for stream. So, so you know, Doreen, sometime back, uh, described uh, 
you know, one of the, the brands, Brandsy Awards as the Oscar of brands, but I think then, then Stream would be rightfully the Met Gala of where brands, agencies, you know, your um, VCs, social entrepreneurs, we, we met so many different people, academicians, um, everything under one roof. So I had so many questions because I'm, you know, I, for me, the digital world, I've been, you know, spending so much time just understanding how it works and nobody really has any answers, very honestly. How do you monetize it? Why are brands not interested in a particular content? What goes viral? Who spends in what? How are companies actually tracking what will work and what will not and how much of it will contribute to sales, etc. Nobody really has any answers. And at Stream, um, because there were so many of these minds together, you actually, um, I, I really got to understand the heartbeat of what was going on. So that was pretty amazing. No, absolutely. And, and I think the other part was that when you went in there, we saw uh, you also after the skeptical initial mini gaze on everything that you passed. Uh, you know, you, you decided that, okay, this could be a collection of good Mathurs as well. <laughs> there were intelligent people, there were people who were, who were having lots of conversations, and you ended up cooking for everyone. That, of course, came, yes, of course. I mean, the big cookout was one of the, the best things to happen. Uh, you know, it was an amalgamation of everything that happened over the last two days, and I enjoyed it. And there was a lot of conversation, you know, right there during that event. But what was even more interesting, like Sid pointed out, was like, the discussion boards. I mean, I wanted to be a fly on the wall. And you could be that if you chose to, but you can't. I mean, you can't escape the energy of stream. You know, you have to put your thoughts out there on the discussion board, run from one to the other. You know, then you had, you know, I, of course, totally avoided the, the social, you know, the, the whole sculpture and the music thing. Because that I get lots of, right? So I was just like this open sponge. And of course, every evening, the way stream is designed is that every evening you cannot escape meeting people. You really, you know, even though you know nothing about them, you know about their work. And you know, every dinner or every breakfast is uh, is designed to make you meet up with people who eventually, like you said, there was no card exchange. But till today, I'm in touch with at least 15 people I met. It was amazing. I mean, so so tell me, as a creative person who went there, because we've got people who are from the brand side or whatever. What, you know, did you did you engage in those conversations? All those questions that you had, did some of them get answered? Did you come across uh, people who then uh, did people react to you as as, oh, here's this person who comes from the media side of things or whatever, because there were, there were different streams of people as well. You know, that's the thing. You can't be present by proxy in stream. You can't be representing a company. I love that line. You can't be <laughs> present by proxy Exactly. <laughs> so don't lag off proxy and send someone no else. proxy. You are who you are and you know what you know. So everyone in the discussion, whether they were CEOs or they were brand heads or vice presidents or, or somebody like me who doesn't come from a from a corporate setup. We were we, we, we were each other's answers and questions at the same time. And yes, I got, I got you know, for example, the, the you know, yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, I'm just saying, I'm yeah. turning to Apurva and saying, Apurva, you're getting quotable quotes to use for a lifetime. We were, we were everybody's answers as well I as everybody's questions. He should be the questions. paid host, he should be the free host. Yeah, so. it's <laughs> fabulous, but that's amazing, amazing. No, really. I think that's wonderful. I, I have come up with, ex uh, with an experience. I mean, I got a lot of answers, Roshan. Honestly, it is that one place, a conglomeration of all your question, answers, thoughts, discussions. What makes things viral? Okay, now there are different, different aspects from different industries who are putting in their two bit. For example, I put up a topic on the discussion board saying, why aren't brands interested in investing in content for women over 40s on digital, for example. And I'm, I mean, I haven't got that answer from any, but the, the kind of people who attended the discussion, I have my answers and I'm following them up. Okay, my last Brilliant. question to you is, if there was a hashtag that you had to create for stream, what would that hashtag be? They give a Twitter bio, if it says you're on Instagram so much, Tell me, oh, what's the perfect image that? Image or hashtag? One of the two. Hashtag get invited. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky if you get invited. I loved it. I will, you can bet your gorgeous suit. Gandhi suit that I will definitely attend again. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Mini. Thank you. And I must tell you that, you know, Mini had to be, it was flying off and traveling somewhere. And before that, I said, you've just got to come and share that experience because the enthusiasm is infectious. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mini. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've spoken enough about stream, but now it's about the brands that flow upstream. Let's find out about the brands and the value that he, these brands have, what they've created so far. Um, ladies and gentlemen, 
the next person who's coming up here who will quickly take you through the India piece is Vishik Talwar. Vishik is the Managing Director, South Asia for Kantar Millwood Brown. Uh, rich and varied experience of two decades, but the interesting thing is that while he's worked with clients across sectors, etc., he is passionate about the same things that most Indians are passionate about, which is movies and cricket. Movies and cricket. Why don't you come here, Vishik, and I'm going to quickly ask you just one question on that. Um, which is that if, if you actually had your option of movies, who would you, who are the tops that you look at? Who, who are the ones that you enjoy the most? Tell us something we don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's, as you said, I agree, uh, fairly varied in my choices. So uh, uh, from Gulzar and his subtlety to maybe the aggression and the goriness of Tarantino, I can enjoy all of them. Gulzar on one side, Quentin Tarantino on the other. You know this is going to be an interesting conversation uh, and he's going to be having something great to share because possibly the amalgamation of both would not be a kill bill but a kill dill. <laughs> yeah, that's a possibility yeah, absolutely, for sure. Absolutely. Vishik, I'm going to leave the stage to you because you're going to go give us some killer insights. Please put your hands together for Vishik Talwar. Thank you, Roshan. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are almost to the last segment where we will take you through the key highlights from the 2017 Brandsy uh, findings. Uh, to quickly put the agenda, uh, we will obviously introduce Brandsy to you, uh, follow it up with the announcements of the most valuable brands, and then take you through some of the learnings that you could use to build strong and sustainable brands. Starting with the first, a quick introduction. Uh, it has already been talked about by David that it's perhaps the largest brand equity database that we have. Uh, to really you for a little bit of an insight. So, so tell me, you know, in all that was spoken about, love for a brand, innovation, price, etc., there are so many things. What would you say is, is most important for the Indian consumer? I think innovation. Because all the others have been long-lasting. I think 15 years ago, innovation may not have been such a uh, crucial parameter. Okay, so so there we there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, just a couple of views and opinions on what makes our brands more successful and what do people want to connect with. We're going to be launching the top five brands in a very very unique way. They're not in any order of preference. You'll be able to see them on stage itself. So may I request the lights to be dimmed as we move on in a presentation in a unique way of the top five brands. Just a few seconds, ladies and gentlemen, as the team puts on the top five brands.
It's nice. You want to add something more? Living a dream, living a home, let the rhythm take control. Living this day, living it now, live the moment right now. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the top five brands. And as I said, they're not in any order of rank at the moment. Um, any any guesses for who's going to be number one? Anand, should I come to you or or you have inside information already? Yeah, so so who, who, what's your guess? I, I'd say uh, Asian Paints. Asian Paints is what Anand says. I, I, heard, I heard some other name over here. What do you? H HDFC. HDFC. Are you from there? No. <laughs> okay, uh, we've got two uh, options already, HDFC, Asian Paints. My dear friend, tell me, you already know, right? No, I don't. You don't? Ah, so, so the intrigue is as much, is as much there. Uh, you've got three more options to choose from, or do you want to back one of those? I'll back uh, HDFC. You'll back HDFC, Asian Paints, HDFC, two, two names have been given. HDFC. Three people are saying HDFC, and... One says Asian Paints. Anybody else? Anyone has a diverse view at all? Anybody holding a, a diverse view from that? No? No one here? Um, okay. Let's, let's find out. Tarun, do you, do you have a guess? Uh, uh, Airtel. Airtel. Airtel, Asian Paints, HDFC. We've heard three names. We're just going to find out who are the top five. Well, for that, ladies and gentlemen, may I request Mr. Ranjan Kapoor to join us over here. You saw Ranjan and many, uh, many avatars in that stream video, from the sculptor to the painter to the conversation leader. Congratulations. Welcome, sir, once again for being here with us because Stream Asia is coming to India. Uh, that's really, really good news. Let's find out the most valuable brand. We have 
at number five, ICICI. May I request the team from ICICI to join us here? Aarti, congratulations. At number four, we've got Asian Beans. The Oscars of Brands. And at number four, we've got Asian Paints. As many called it, the Met Gala. In third place, we've got State Bank of India, SBI. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be generous with the applause now. Come on, please put your hands together. These are our top three brands. And if you want to tweet out your excitement right now, it's Brand Z India. Brand Z India is where you can tweet out the position, the places, your enthusiasm, your love for the brands. At number two, and of, of course after this everything will be very, very clear, we have Airtel. Hearty congratulations, Airtel. And now for number one, which of course you all know and as rightly guessed by three people amongst the five that I asked, HDFC is the most valuable brand in India. Bases the entire Brand Z survey. And it's lovely to see the entire team here from HDFC. Congratulations. I stand corrected, HDFC Bank. That's the amount they value their brand, if I get it even slightly off. Congratulations, HDFC Bank, the number one. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and a big round of applause for all the winners. The top 50. At number five, we had ICICI. At four, we had Asian Paints. At three, we had SBI. At two, we had Airtel, and at number one, it's HDFC Bank. Thank you so much, Ranjan. Thank you for doing the honors. Ladies and gentlemen, a night like this is incomplete without celebrations. We had uh, a lot of great presentations, some great conversations on stage. We also got to know how this entire valuation is done. But as I said, uh, you will be getting closer to a few of the brands now because we'll be putting you in high spirits and taking you through the rest of the evening as you join us for drinks and dinner outside. Thank you very much. Please do join us for dinner and cocktails outside. And once again, a big round of applause to the entire team that put this together. The hashtag is BrandZIndia, and we'd love you to raise your hands once more. And a big round of applause to all the organizing team, everyone who made this together. This brings Brand Z India 2017 to an end the most valuable Indian brands. Please don't forget to carry the reports. They are in your carry bags outside. So uh, there's food for thought as well. It's not just food and drinks, but please remember to carry the bags that have got the reports in them. <laughs> 